Hi everybody. Um, in this video, we're going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a, a range value complication with the new uh, complication designer in Pudgy Black. Um, so what we're going to try to make is something like this. So this is a uh, complication which shows the value uh, using a needle on a round uh, uh, canvas, using some tick marks with an icon and a and a battery icon in this case. Um, so as you can see it looks like this and keep in mind that when designing a complication <coughs> you're really making a style which should be uh, should work with different types of, of at least with different data providers and when you uh, tap the button here you can see all these different data providers which supply might supply slightly different uh, fields so let's just start and then we're gonna show you how to how this works um, so we start by making a new complication and then we choose the range value and then we give it a name so we call it range value example and then uh, as you can see when you start off you already get a couple of layers which are locked which are always there and which you cannot remove and these give uh, optional data. So uh, we have a short title, we have a short text, and we have an icon. So these uh, layers uh, will be optional. So not all data providers will give them a value. Some data providers will, and some will only give two of them. So we have to design our a style in such a way that it works with all these different type of configuration. So let's start with making the base of our complication. <coughs> I'm just going to hide the optional uh, field uh, layers right now. Um, let's start by changing the grid to make it give it a little bit higher density to work with. So let's go to 139. And then we're going to make our base of our complication first. So uh, let's give it a circle. That's as the base shape. I'm going to remove the stroke and then make it a little bit darker. Uh, so this is our background and now we're going to try to make the tick marks and for this we can use an arc layer to quickly put tick marks on there so the arc layer starts out, out like this so for this one we don't need the fill and we need the stroke let's give it a nice uh, accent color so for this let's use something bright yellow and then we're going to make the stroke a bit bigger and now we're going to use the arc layer parameters to change the look of this of this arc <coughs> so um, I already thought about these values so I'm gonna just enter them the first start angle will be 29 um, then we want to use a full sweep of 360 degrees our part angle will be 2 so only small tick and then our gap angle will be 28 so as you can see as you increase the gap between the ticks will be bigger so if we put it at 28 everything should align nicely as you can see it's nicely at the center so we put the stroke in the center of the of the shape now let's make it slightly smaller to look nicer something like this and now we're going to copy this layer to make the smaller tick marks. We add a copy and we're going to change the parameters. Uh, so this will be 29 and a half, the sweep angle 360. Our part angle will be smaller, so the smaller tick marks also are, are less wide. And then the gap angle, we will put it at 5. And as you will see, it will nicely fit in between of our ticks which we already had so now we have the smaller ticks there as well and then we're just gonna uh, adjust the stroke a bit to make them a bit smaller so as you can see now we have the base of our complication done let's put these layers in a group um, so we can use them together and we call this group back Ground. Let's drag it to the background and now we're going to have a look at our complication fields. 
So we're gonna make them visible again and see where to place those. So let's start with the icon. Um, I wanna put the icon in the center, a little bit to the top, maybe a bit smaller, then put it exactly at the middle. <coughs> And there we have our icon, maybe slightly bigger like this. And then we're going to color it. So this is a image, special image layer, which has a vector graphics attached to it. And we can tint those, so we can give it a color. So here, let's give it the same color as our accent and make it slightly darker. So now we have placed our icon at the right place. And we can see that we have this... Uh, short text field so let's look uh, have a look at our complication providers and see what it looks like so as you can see some of the fields are already there but some of it is still a mess so we still have to place our text at the correct position or at a nice position so it looks well for all these different types of data providers um, so let's start by putting it in the center of our layer and then we reduce the size a bit like this. And I want to put it here in the middle. And then maybe we can change the font. To this for instance. Something light. We change the color back to our dark accent color. And there we have our text. So our short text is now in the correct position. So if we look at our data providers, we can see that we're doing a lot better already, but we still have this title field, which is not in the right position right now. So let's switch to a different data provider. We switch to this one, and now we can see the title. So let's put this in a good position as well. So start again by centering it in the, in the bounds of the layer. And then making it smaller, make it small like this, and then put it somewhere here, maybe even smaller, a bit too big right now, something like this, and then change the font to the one that we were using, change the color. So there you have it, this one looks okay already. Now, if we look at our different data providers, we can see that in most cases we are doing pretty good. But here, there is one uh, where the icon is overlaying the title. So we want to use some sort of conditional uh, styles over here. So, and this is where the new automation comes into play. So what I want to do is, uh, in case we have an icon, we just want to hide the title. So we don't, you don't have to use all the all the fields at all times. So in this case, if we have an icon, let's try to hide the title. So for this, we use the automation. So we select our title layer and push this automation button in the right top. And there you see you can automate different uh, things. So you can automate the rotation, the scale, the positioning and the visibility. So in our case, we want to automate the visibility. We want to make it uh, hidden. So visibility set to, to false uh, when there is an icon. So let's have a look here. We have different type of tags we can use for this automation. So first of all, the values, but we don't want to use those right now. Here we have some text fields. And here we have some Boolean fields, which are really helpful right now. So this is what we need. So we have a has icon. And now what we want to do is we want to make it invisible. So set this value to false if we have an icon. So we have to use this field and use the opposite of what this value will give. So you put an exclamation mark in front of it to use the not operator, which is all standard uh, JavaScript uh, syntax in this case. So you can see if we put it like this, our short title is now invisible because we have an icon. You can see on the short tight label uh, layer that there is a little automation icon there that this layer is automated right now. You can pause the automation by using this pause button and there you can see it's back. 
So now if we look at our data providers, we can see that we are doing even better. All cases or most cases are looking pretty good now. And the only thing we haven't done yet is to use the value of the, of the ranged complication. So for this, we want to make a, a needle which rotates based on this value. So let's start out by making this needle. So for this, I'm going to use a polygon and then I'm going to just draw some points. I'm going to try to make a very simple needle out of this. So put this value nice in the middle. Then these bounds, something like this. Here, put it like this and there. We have a very simple needle. Let's make the stroke rounded. And then change the color to our accent color. And also change the color of the fill to our accent color. And then let's put a dot in the middle to indicate where the center of the where the center of the needle is. So create a circle for this. Make it smaller so it's at the correct position. Now you move a little bit. Now I can see that the needle is not in the center. So this should be at zero. Yeah, and now we see that this is in the center, so we can put it here, and this has to be over here, and this has to be uh, here and here. So now we are centered. Let's remove the stroke. Okay, now I haven't nicely had yeah, this problem here, so this is not in the center. So like this it will should be, yeah, now it looks good. So make this a bit smaller and then change the color to our background color. And as you can see now we have made a very simple needle. And what we want to do is try to, uh, now this thing is not in the middle yet. So let's put it at Y at the center as well. Now we want to rotate this uh, this needle based on uh, the current value of the complication. So let's put these two together in one group and we call it needle. And then we try to automate this. So again, we're going to use the automation fields. So we select our group, and then we press the automation button and we choose rotation in this case. So here we want to use the value to rotate it. So, so we could use our value, but as you can see, currently it's 39. It's not very helpful for getting to the right angle. Uh, but a value always comes with a maximum value and with a minimum value. So using those, we could normalize the value to be between 0 and 1. So this is already done for you. So you can use the normalized value tag for this. So what we do is we use the normalized value tag and we multiply it with 360, so for a full circle uh, angle, 360 degrees. And we use this to rotate. So as you can see now, our, our and let's for this switch to a data provider. One of the test data providers, they always give you a, a new value, so it's nicer to work with. So while drawing, you can see that it rotates, but it's not rotating around the correct center. So for this, right now we pause the automation <coughs> and then we have to change the rotation center of our group. So we can use the rotation tool for this. Here we have our rotation center. So if we put this in the middle of our, our uh, pin of the needle, and now re-enable the rotation, or re-enable the automation, you can see that it rotates around the center of our uh, complication. So now we have uh, finished updating all fields. <coughs> it's just one more thing. Always, if you have an, a nice outline of your complication, make sure that you name it outline because that will uh, tell the system that it can use this uh, shape to draw ripples, for instance, when you tap it or to use it when you select another data provider in the, on the watch. Um, so let's once more look at our different data providers and we can see that all of them look pretty nice right now. Everything is in a nice place. Everything is uh, automated correctly. 
Uh, so that um, kind of concludes our uh, designing of this complication. Now let's see how it works, uh, how you put it on your watch face. So we close the designer and then we uh, tap again and then we can select it. And now it's added to our watch face. So here you can see in the custom element section, this is where you add your live texts and your uh, complications. You now see your uh, newly created complication. You can change the data provided from here as well. So uh, in this case, we want to use, for instance, the watch battery. So now this one will show your watch battery. <coughs> and from here, you can change the position. So you can resize it and you can uh, rotate it and you can change the position in the X and Y direction. So now you have a new style of complications which can use different data types and uh, from the watch, if you have a Wear OS 2.0 device, you can uh, use external data providers even to, to uh, use your uh, complication style. <coughs> and as with all Puji Black items, if it's all factor, you can change the, the colors afterwards. So for instance, if we want to make it uh, with a pink accent, you can change it like this. Maybe change the background to white. And there we have our same style with the different colors. So that was kind of uh, our first tutorial on how to create a new complication style in the Do Pucci Black. I hope uh, everybody understood how this works and I hope you all like the new Pucci Black. Thank you very much.